What is up guys, it's Mason with Cuz I Farm here, back here with another video. I hope you guys have been enjoying the recent uploads. I'm starting to post every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time, so make sure you check in every Sunday. Uh, if I can get enough content, I'll be doing every Wednesday and Sunday at 6 p.m. Central, so keep an eye open. If you guys are new, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also, when you subscribe, turn hit that little bell notification because guys, YouTube is a little whack. And if you do not hit the notification, you guys will never know when I upload, even if you are subscribed, um, how YouTube works. But anyways, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up as well. Also guys, make sure you guys add the social media in the description down below. It means the world when you guys go on my social media, social support. Uh, you guys can add the Snapchat and Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that will be in the description down below. And let's get right down to the video. Alright guys, I'm going to start off with this video talking about Schaefer's Oil here. Uh, I want to say a quick thank you to Schaefer's and their company over in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, they hooked me up with all this stuff and also I'm very proud to announce and tell you guys that I'm part of the Schaefer's Oil team now. Uh, I'm working with Schaefer's Oil and they have a whole bunch of products I'm going to be using on all of our farm equipment and lawn equipment, etc. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. But also guys, feel free to check out Schaefer's at www.schaeferoil.com. Go browse their website. Also, feel free to check out their Instagram and Facebook and all their social medias at Schaefer's Oil. I think 1839. Uh, that's what their Instagram is. I'll leave you guys that in the description down below. Go check them out. Their products are amazing and highly recommend. They're best in the lubricants game. So make sure you guys go check them out. And once again, thank you guys to Schaefer's Oil. So guys, what I'm going to start off with today is the Schaefer's Oil 10W30. I'm going to put this in my lawn mowers. All sorts of gas engines can use this. Uh, recommended this the 10w30 is recommended for lawn mowers uh, or so it's a small engine type of units uh, tillers you name it so this is what we're going to use today it's a synthetic uh, oil and um, this is the best stuff you can get so in this box they sent there's three of these boxes inside of this box and there's a bunch of tubes of grease in there I'll show you guys right here a bunch of tubes of grease and this will be the 219 uh, Sinforce green it's waterproof and ex uh, extreme pressure grease. Um, as it says here, uh, protects and stays in place even under high shock load conditions, withstands higher heat range than conventional greases up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, shields against rust and corrosion and 100% reversible. So like I said, guys, it's up to 250 degrees higher than most greases. And it's waterproof, which is nice, so it doesn't rinse off. None of that, it sticks. This is actually the 219. This is actually mostly for their John Deere equipment. Um, so they recommended this for my John Deere equipment that we have, like our planter, corn head, etc., um, cultivators, all that. So here in this box is the 219. This one is full of grease as well. Um, different type of grease. I've already used one. It is a 274 Molly uh, Synthetic Plus Grease. It's um, extra synthetic base for excellent low temperature and it's waterproof as well um, actually i use this on the lawn mowers and stuff like that so bearings i've used it on the lawn mower bearings which i'm gonna use in this video uh, this is good stuff i've used it for quite a while on them and it turns out really good all right guys today we're working on x304 and then i have a z930m uh, right here we're gonna be doing some maintenance and stuff and then i have a loader 5310 john deere loader as well so I'm going to be working on these, changing oil, lubricants, uh, doing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to explain to you guys how to do a couple of things that you may have not have known before. And uh, first of all, I'm going to take it to the air compressor, get them blown off uh, to get all this grass out here. Uh, usually this grass can get hot and catch on fire um, from the bearings getting hot, the belts, etc. I've had it happen before. And uh, just get that blown off first. And then I'm going to take this deck completely off. Uh, but we're actually going to power wash the 304 and power wash that and the loader as well. Uh, so let's get right down to it. All right, there's these little uh, pins like I explained to you guys here. Um, usually I just take those off, put that there, and then usually it just slides like this. Like that, and then blow out there. Rocks and stuff get stuck in here all the time. A lot of people actually didn't know uh, this just lifts up here, so you can lift up here and get there as well. Um, yeah, I've actually done a lot of service on people's lawnmowers, um, and they didn't even know about that, and I replaced springs and stuff for them. They're like, wow, I didn't even know that comes up. So there's that as well. So I have a little fluff ball on my mic here. 
I want to test and see how windproof it actually is. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm going to start blowing these off, and I'll take you guys to a little time lapse here, some cool shots, and uh, enjoy this part. Uh, pulleys there's like little grooves on your rock stick under there too make sure you guys get those out um, as you guys you may have to use your hand to pull some of this grass out sticks a bunch of stuff gets stuck in here all the time my half of that blown off I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the seat uh, under the battery and then the fans now there's fans under here where this gra uh, this grass is excuse me um, that gets clogged up see that's not good um, but there's fans under there and if yours get clogged like that it's pretty popular so you guys should probably do it after every mowing which i haven't done which i'm gonna start doing um but blow that off take all the grass off and start blowing that off all right guys i have the z930m done uh blowed off uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and go to the 304 now I'm gonna get that one done and then we're gonna take it up, start doing some maintenance and stuff. And at the end, we'll power wash it as well. Uh, but look how much better it looks under here. There's no, there's little fans under here, each one of those for the hydro. Uh, you want that clean as well. You want the fan clean. And a lot of times over here, behind your valves, where your valves are, your valve heads, a lot of grass gets stuck up there too. And people don't realize that. And that will actually kill your engine. Stay hydrated, guys. It's hot out here. It's like 90, humid. Stay hydrated. All right, guys, I'm back in the garage here after blowing them off. Give them as good as you can. Uh, this one doesn't really matter because I'm taking this deck off of this one. Uh, these are actually a pain in the butt to get the deck off. So just set it to level zero, put it all the way down, do the best you can. I'm actually gonna take the deck off on this one. And basically guys, what you're gonna do is just set your deck level to zero and put it all the way down. And then there's these pins I'll show you guys here. But then you have these pins on the front here, one on each side. And you guys can wanna take those off. And then under here, you're gonna pull these pins right here, one on each side as well. There's this pin here. So just, just yank and pull it like that. Now this is loose. Do the same thing to the other side. And then you got this pin here, just turn it. Sometimes it's a little difficult. Sometimes you need pliers for that one, which I will need. Um, excuse my heavy breathing, guys. It's hot, and I just <laughs> ran. There, same thing over there. The best of the best. I'll snap on. Just pull this side. Put them there. Sometimes you may need a hammer, a soft face hammer. Push them in. Sometimes you usually don't. Just like that. All right, guys, I forgot one thing. You got the drive belt over here. So usually pull this back. You may need another person, but pull this spring back and then you can take off uh, the drive belt that drives the deck. Just pull this right here, this lever, and then take it off. Okay. All right, guys, I pulled out the, uh, the deck now. Uh, so you guys can pull it off if you want. I'm gonna power wash it. But now, it's a lot easier to do some maintenance on your deck if it's needed, like blades, etc. And your king pin under here, usually there's a pin for your steering that you need to grease. Uh, there's a zerk under there. It's a lot easier to maintain if you guys need to get pulleys under here. Um, so I highly recommend when you do service, always take off the deck. Even you gotta use best of the best for oil pans. Shave for oil pans, baby. It's really nice when you have the deck off. It's a lot easier to drain the oil instead of oil getting all over the deck if you need to or dealing with the pan being lopsided or holding the pan on there. Instead, it's a lot easier. Your oil, just like that. It's a lot easier. Oil's finishing, I'm gonna go ahead and just take off the oil filter. If you want, you guys can just go to the store to get an oil filter thing. I got this from Matco. Uh, so it's nice to have. It's a lot easier to uh, work and uh, it's a lot easier than having to deal with it sometimes. So just do that, she comes right off. Even don't be dumb like that. All right guys, clean it up the best you can. 
uh, beforehand, but also a really good trick. The seals on your oil, put your old oil like off the drain tube or in the pan and rub that seal right there. Uh, it helps seed it. When you guys put on the oil filters, um, basically just put them hand tight. Do not over tighten because when it gets hot, the oil seal basically melts to it and helps it seal. So you can just go ahead and type up. Don't over tight these as well. You'll strip it and you'll end up never getting that off. You'll have to get a whole new uh, oil drain plug. All right, guys, once again, I'm using Schaefer's 10W30. I highly, highly recommend it. It helps lubricate your engine way more than the John Deere stuff. It helps with temperatures. Keep it lubricated. Keep temperatures down, excuse me, and all of the above. Also, if you do not have an oil funnel, pour most of one jug in there, and you can cut the top here, and then take off the cap and put the jug on the top, and then you can use that as your oil funnel. Here we go, guys. First, Schaefer's oil in this John Deere. Now, guys, it usually only takes two quarts. Uh, each one of these is one quart. One container down, one more to go. Now when checking your oil, guys, do not screw your caps on. Set them in here, do not screw them on. Set it here. This has a little bit too much oil, as you guys can tell, it's right here. It's a little bit too much. Usually they don't take the full two quarts. Um, you also got your oil filter that will hold some. So this should be just about just right. If not, I'll actually just unscrew un, uh, the oil plug here and then it'll actually drain out the old oil as well. And then you got all fresh oil. Um, so once again, just check it. Do not screw it in. See, there's a little much in here, but I'm gonna turn it on and check it after it fills the oil filter. All right guys, for another maintenance tip for your battery, I use battery terminal protectant. Uh, this stuff helps with your batteries from corroding and all that. You guys know corroded batteries are a pain in the ass to deal with and they're messy and they're just all in all pain. Uh, it's like a red spray. So put it on there, coat it in red and do the both sides and let it dry. And that will help out your batteries from not corroding and being a pain in the butt to deal with. So now I'll go ahead and take your uh, air filter out of here. Usually it's just two clips. You may have a different one. Uh, this one's actually not bad. This actually I'm just gonna keep for spare just in case. It looks like, yep, mice were in there. That's not good. I'll throw that one away. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the pre-filter back in here, take all the mice stuff out. Put the pre-filter in there first. Put that in there. Slap it right back in. Now she's got a new air filter. All right guys, now we're gonna do the fuel filter. Uh, this one's a little brown eyes, so you guys can tell compared to the new one big difference here now guys <coughs> excuse me if yours if you're not sure which way the fuel filter goes on just think about it the tank is under the seat over here and it flows this way so you want your flow from your tank to go to your engine and there's a little arrow on here on your fuel filter so you want the flow to come this way not this way your fuel doesn't go to your engine to your fuel tank it goes from your fuel tank to your engine so you wanna go ahead and take these clips off here and put in your new fuel filter. Now within 20 to 30 seconds, you guys should have your fuel filter on there and ready to go. All right guys, now the spark plugs, John Deere or whatever engine you have, if you have a Kohler engine, if you have whatever, Kawasaki or Briggs and Stratton, they're recommended to be 28 to 30 thousands here on the spark plug between here and the little plug. If you have a feeler gauge, go ahead and use a feeler gauge. If not, it's okay. Uh, but do it to where you can get 28 to 30 thousands to where your feeler gauge can fit in there properly. Now that is the proper spec. I highly recommend doing it. Do not just go to your, your engine and say, okay, I'm gonna put my spark plugs, spark plugs in right out of the box. Sometimes I've had it even happen where it's completely smashed in. You won't get any spark, your engine won't start and or you can have serious problems with your engine. I highly recommend putting a feeler gauge on there and doing it to the right specs. So each side should have one of these boots, uh, rubber boots to put on your um, spark plug, take them in and out. Just loosen that up, you don't have to go all the way. Also guys, a huge recommendation, do not over tighten spark plugs. Also these are very easy to cross thread. 
Do not cross thread them or you're going to have a serious job to do and possibly could ruin your block if you can never re rethread it properly. All right, guys, for every grease zerk on this lawnmower, I'm going to be using the 274 Synthetic Plus Grease from Schaefer's. All right, guys, there should be one grease zerk on each side of the steering wheel, on each side of the steering, sorry, excuse me. Uh, put it on there. I usually go five squeezes or I go until the cap starts moving. You see the cap moving? That's when I stop. And then you come over here to the other side. Sometimes you're, depending on what mower you have, you may have one right here, then you may have one here on your steering stabilizer as well. Uh, go over here. I usually do five or until grease comes out like it did right here. All right guys, under the front of the mower, this is the king one that no one ever does. Very rarely, they always forget about it, it's hidden. You go to the front of the mower, you go under it, and this is why it's nice to take off your deck to get this one right here. Do the same thing, put it on there. It's hard to hold the camera and do it at the same time. Um, put your fitting on there. I usually do five or until it starts coming out on the other side over here. All right, guys, there's going to be a grease circuit here on each side, one on each side uh, for your wheel. So go ahead, do that. I usually do about five in here, too. Make sure when you buy, look, two squirts and it's already out, so you're good. You don't even need to do five. Done greasing the mower, now coming to the deck. Some of these pulleys, like this one right here, the grease circuit's on the side right here. Some of them put them up top. The nice newer ones put them just on top but these ones are on the side like this one's on the side right here so make sure you guys look and sometimes they actually have them both so make sure you guys check that a lot of people actually don't get these grease as well because they don't see one on top and they don't even think about the one on the side so make sure you guys get the ones on the side i'm gonna go ahead and start working on the z930m so i'm gonna take that the x04 out and pull the z930m in <laughs> on this deck there is none these are actually the only zerks they have they have one here and then one in the middle pulley uh, i usually give these five to ten um, so i usually go that one and then this one five to ten as well and then one back here five to ten as well All right, guys, good thing to check on these. Lift up the seat. You will have this yellow cap right here. I'll turn on this light right here. This is your hydro, which is your hydraulic fluid. Always, always check that to make sure if you have any. They're actually run very low. The, low, the fill level on these is actually very low. Um, so make sure you check the hydro fluid. You may want to grab a light to look. This one's got hydro fluid, and then it has the minimum, maximum, and we're good on fluid. All right, guys, here is your air filter. Just the two and one on each side of uh, these little tabs. Make sure you guys put them on and off the same, same way. Um, there, on these, there is an outer, which is this one. This is considered the outer. You don't need these junk. Here's the inner. Sometimes you can save these because they really don't get used. Uh, this one doesn't look bad, so I'm actually just going to save this. Uh, looks pretty clean. It's not really hard to go find part numbers for this stuff. Uh, usually you can just buy a pack, and when you buy a pack, they have all the part numbers in there. Just like that, the inner and outer are replaced. Guys, I have the spark plugs here. Now, same thing. Here's the part number for those. Two of these. Now, same thing, guys. 28 to 30 thousandths on the clearance on the spark plug. I'm going to go ahead and put these in. You guys don't need to see this on camera. You guys should know how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. All right, guys, here's your spark plug. There's going to be one on each side. These ones are a little more difficult to uh, get to. These actually have a metal boot instead of a rubber. But go ahead in there. It's a 5 8 socket. You're going to need a deep, 5 8 deep. Go ahead and break it loose and tighten it. When you tighten these, like I said, do not over tight. You will cause damage. And I'll get back to you guys when these are on.
All right, guys, I'm using the same oil I did on the other one with the 10W30 Schaefer's Supreme 7000. Now, this takes two and a half quarts. So just prepare yourself by three and then use half the other one, obviously, two, two and a half of these. And uh, let's get down to it. Now, you guys got to use best of the best snap-on wrenches. <laughs> I'm just playing. But anyways, guys, the Z930M, this is the EFI, which is fuel-injected. This right here, the outer one, is going to be 18 and the inner one is gonna be 15. Now some may be different, but that's what this one is. Just put this on here, hold here, and you're gonna to have to break loose. Now sometimes this one's a little pain in the butt because whoever had this one is stripped, so we gotta do some work to it. Really toy. <laughs> Jesus. Someone had this on here so tight. Guys, oil plugs, you never need on this tight. Trust me ever had to since this was stripped on the back whoever did it last stripped it out uh aka john deere uh, don't take your stuff there just do it yourself um i put a 916 on your matco ratchet one uh, but this side because this is these aren't the flank drive plus snap on ones they're just the normal flank drive um and these are the flank drive plus matco ones so i had a way better grip on there now this may this one may not work on this but it should. It's the more lower you go, the tighter it gets. Yep, perfect. Sometimes it makes a mess. Put your oil in here. And then it drains in here. There's a new filter. Make sure you guys clean the seal. Just dip your hand in oil. Put on the seal. Make sure the old seal is not still stuck on there. Hand tight. There you go. She's on there. You guys know the saying, curiosity kills a cat. You're not supposed to be in here. But, these little dudes are my friends. Say hi. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure it's snugged up. Make sure your oil filter's on there. Now, we're going to go ahead and start putting the oil. It takes two and a half quarts. And uh, let's start doing that. I'm using the Shaper's 10W30. And uh, I'll take you guys to a little time lapse here. And the John Deere is officially approved of Shaper's oil. Alright guys, now we're done with the service part. I'm going to go ahead and take this and the uh, 304 and the loader tractor and all that. I actually did service on the uh, loader not too long ago. Those you do about every 100 hours. Hasn't had 100 hours on it yet. So I'm not doing that, but I'm going to wash it and I'm going to wash these and uh, I'll take you guys to a time lapse. washing the uh, 5310 i didn't like really like hardcore wash it i soaked it it wasn't too too bad it just had some dirt and um bird poop on it but got her washed she looks pretty good but everything looks better when it's wet clean up the bucket clean out all the rims and uh clean everything else all right ladies and gentlemen this right here is the thumbnail photo i just set up with the new suck up grain bin and also the shapers and the lawnmowers and the loader. Now guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Shafer's Oil again for giving me the op this opportunity, excuse me, for letting me use their oil, their lube, every single sort of thing. I am officially a part of the Shafer's Oil team. I really appreciate you guys. Also guys, feel free to check them out, please. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a like 
and subscribe. Also, when you guys subscribe, make sure you guys hit that little bell notification so you guys get my notification when I go live. Otherwise, if you just subscribe, you guys will never know when I upload. Also, guys, we're uploading every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you guys check out my updates. Also, check out the social media in the description down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.